trouble is that the whole thing depends entirely on the personality of the examiner. I mean, what I mean is some of them think that if you... if you belch back what they said, then you've learned something. But the other type loathes to have his own words shot back at him, but thinks that if you paraphrase what he said, then we're using your own intelligence. It wouldn't be so bad, you know, if one knew what type one was up against, of course one never does, as one. Actually, I think they ought to tell you who's going to mark the papers. Oh, shut up, Wilson. Damn it, you're always talking. Oh, really? Thirty-eight, please. What's he like? Bloody awful. I say, Bulmer. Mm -hmm. What did he give you? Branches of the trigeminal. Oh, God. Mm. Same as four years ago. Lingual nerve took a swerve over the higher glossus. Said Wharton's duck. Please. Lingual nerve took a swerve over the higher glosses. Said Wharton's duck. Well, best of luck. Wasn't, so don't worry, Dad. Look, I know. I'll make a cup of tea. tea? Yes, it'll do you good. Would you like it now or after your bath? Private medical advice, sir, if you don't mind giving it. Yes. Can you tell me what a, a lipoma is, please, sir? Lipoma, you mean? That'll be it. Is it a growth, doctor? No, it's a sort of fatty lump. Why? Is it is it dangerous? No, not at all. I think you've got one? Oh no, it's not me. It's the wife. Got one on her arm. In the last letter, she said she'd have to go into hospital, have it taken away. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. It's not at all dangerous. It can be inconvenient. If you do better to have it removed. Yes, Doctor, but uh, the operation... Well, it's very simple. They won't even have to put her under gas. Well, uh, uh, No, honestly, there's nothing to worry about. This was six weeks ago, Doctor, and I haven't had a letter from her since. Well, probably something's gone wrong with the mails, not with your wife. There's nothing in the operation to stop her writing for six weeks. Oh, really, Rag, I wouldn't worry. Thank you, Doctor. Sir. Wish I was there all the same. Keep an eye on that gap, will you? Right, no problem.
Nice work, Rag. You're all right. All right. These bloody mortars pacing us for five solid days. No hot food since Sunday. Well, we're all in the same boat. Don't expect a lion's cornhouse up here, do you? No. But I do expect a bit of sleep. Sleep? What do you think this is, the war office? Close. A few more like that. Boy. You're no worse off from the rest of the section. The rest of the section? Aye. There for it, too. Oh, don't, don't be doubt. Thousands, Thousands of men have come through worse than this without, without, without a scratch. scratch. The, the last war. war. The last war. Passchendaele. Some. Bloody millions of casualties. Oh, for oh, God's sake, take a grip of yourself. We got any mortars? Empty chance. You've got, got a bloody good, good chance. chance. Ten, Ten to one, one you won't even be moved. Ten to one. That's what Fred Blake said just before he got it. What do they want to leave him there for? Stiff. Bloody face blown off. Why don't they take him away? Bloody stretch there. Can't get through. Oh, oh shut, shut up. up. Go on, I've got to go crackers. Seven, Seven men in the section on there. How many rounds have you got left? Fourteen, Corporal. Uh, there you are. Bloody fine, so do you. You used to be the smartest man in the section, didn't you? And now you can't even count a few rounds of that dog. Pull yourself together, for God's sake. You've got a rifle, haven't you? And you're in that good shot, haven't you? And those jays are nice in range, aren't they? Well!
get a chance. None of us have a chance. You blood. Man. I thought I told you to get up the rest of the section. Right. Don't. Couldn't get through. Frank, step out of it, man. What the hell's the matter? Do you realize I can put you on a charge for this? We've just obeyed an order. Yes, sir. God's sake, man. Don't you recognize the slip fire when you see one? Come back. They always do it. Now listen, Rag. If you don't go back and join the others, I'm going to send you down to the CO. I can't afford to have anybody yell in my section. Now get going. Now get going! All right. You've had your chance, now you're under arrest. Now get back, Mr. Sandiford. I suppose you know where Platoon HQ is. Now get back, Mr. Sandiford, and tell him I've sent you. I will send you under escort, I suppose, but I can't spare a good man. Now get cracking! Rag, sir. Looks bomb happy to me. God, Rag. What on earth are you doing here? <laughs> Damn it, man, I asked you a question. <laughs> Mort, sir. Come on, come on. Put this out together, Rag. Can't go on like this. <laughs> go on. Put this out together. Go on. Get back to your section at once. go back to a section like that, he's completely useless. Useless? He's a bloody menace. If the other chaps see him like this, they'll start going the same way themselves. Better send him down to the M.O., I suppose. Rag! Can't spare an escort, though. God knows where he'll go if we turn him loose by himself. Rag! Come back! Is there anyone we can send down with him? Yes, what about our grief, sir? You know that arm of his. Well, you we shouldn't have thought it was that bad. It is. Still, no reason why he shouldn't go down. Probably won't do him any harm to have the doc look at it. No. Oh, will they fix that, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Hargreaves. Yes, sir. You're going down to the MR after all. And there'd be another bloke going along with you. Rag. He's bomb happy. Tell that to the MO when you see him. Right, sir. And there'll be a chip for Mr. Sanderford. Give that to the MO too, will you? Right, sir. Do a ring like Ah, well, that's out of the MO.
these bloody mortars chew anybody up. Hello, Hargraves. What's the matter? It's Rags on. He's bomb heavy. Right, sit him down there. What's the matter with you, Hargraves? Wound in the arm, son. Right. Hargraves, sir. Wound in the arm. What did it? Splinter, sir. Okay, lad. Take it easy. Have a cigarette. Sandy, but, sir. It's about right. It's okay, chum. It's all right. Come and sit down. Go and look after Hargreave, Sergeant. I've put a dressing on and given him some tea. Very good, sir. What's wrong with you, Rag? Let's have a look at you. There's nothing wrong with your legs. It's a bit morphous, sir. <laughs> Sorry, it was a morphous. Yes, I know. We've all heard them. <laughs> Not very pleasant, are they? You've had a bit of a shaking. All right, Rag, all right. Can we soon fix you up? Well, there's nothing wrong here. I think it's just a shaking. Sergeant. Sir? Is there any of that stew? Yes, there is some left. Well, give this chap a meal and barbitone, ten grains. That's the two tablets. Very good, sir. You're going to be all right, Rag. Sergeant's going to give you a couple of pills and then some grub. Let's see what he looks like after that. OK, lad. Take these. That's right. Wash them down with the tea. OK. Now come round the back and we'll get some grub. Here you come. Thank you. You might take him round the back, Sergeant. He'll probably get some sleep there. Yes, sir. I've done that. Just wondered if you like a mug of tea as things seem to be quietening down a bit. Thanks. Very interesting case, then. Rag, I mean. Yes, sir, he was. What exactly was the matter with him? He was a typical acute anxiety neurosis. You couldn't have seen a better example. He was acute. And all he needed was a sedative. No, he needed more than that. As soon as transport's available, we'll whip him off to the core exhaustion centre. He'd only be a handicap the way he is now. Will core evacuate him, sir? Well, I shouldn't think so for a minute. They'll keep him there for a week or two until this thing's cleared up and then send him back. Perfectly fit again. That's the draw for these anxiety cases, is it, sir? Send them to core exhaustion centre. Oh, no, not always. Some cases are quite mild. Take a young soldier in his first battle, for instance. Well, we don't send them back. We give them a good dose of medmel and several hours sleep. The main thing is to get them early. I see. Uh, I've often wondered how you tell when a man has one of these uh, new... Um... Neurosis? Yes, neurosis. Well, it's pretty difficult at times. You see, there's so many factors involved in the production of anxiety. Uh, physical things, exhaustion and infection, for instance, and the man's mental makeup. Everyone gets fagged out in time, of course. But if you're anxious as well, then you get exhausted much quicker than you normally would. Sleep's the best antidote. It acts as a sort of shock absorber. It helps a bloke to keep his balance. Yes, sir, but it's not quite so easy to just drop off to sleep in these parts. You're <laughs> telling me. It's even worse if you've too much anxiety. Then a fellow doesn't sleep properly, no matter how physically exhausted he may be. Anxiety is his trouble, and that's what keeps him awake. So the first thing to do is to give him a sedative. Not a textbook dose, but a, a whacking big, big dose to wipe out his anxieties and let him get a deep, proper sleep with no nightmares. Have you had many cases of anxiety, sir? Oh, more than you'd think. 
A lot of people get anxious very easily, but they're decent fellows and they try and hide it. Like our driver, sir, Farrell. Yes. Yes. You see, that sort of chap gets tired more quickly. Anxiety is more exhausting than pure physical labour. That's why the imaginative bloke gets tired more quickly than the thick-skinned one. I remember a case in North Africa. A fellow came in completely worn out. He looked as if he'd walked a couple of hundred miles. Did you see your platoon, Commander? Yes, Doctor. And did he give you a note for me? Yes, Doctor. Have you got it? Yes, Doctor. Pretty tiring time, haven't you? Yes, tired. Can't go out. Can't face it. You've been under fire for six days, haven't you? Six days. Bones, mortars, no, he's gone. Will you stay there? No, I'll take these. Wash them down with the tea. Audley. Yes, sir. Put him on a stretch and take his boots off. Well, that's exhaustion caused through anxiety. That's too much anxiety and not enough sleep. Another common result is depression. That can be anything from the sort of sadness some soldiers get after a battle, right up to suicide. Remember this serious case in Italy? A fellow came in, absolutely gone to pieces. Old chap. Come on, drink it up. Come on. What's the matter? Um. Section wiped out. My fault. Oh, lot gone. Who sent My you back fault. here? Platoon commander. They all know. I, I, I let them down. I'll take these. Poison. Don't be silly, old man. Doctor. All I'm fit for. Put me out. That sort of a thing can be pretty grim sometimes. Of course, it's just another result of anxiety. And then you get the case of a man who can't think clearly. Well, that's confusion. The worst case of that I ever had, not so long ago, a fellow came into the RAP and was completely lost and dazed. sent you here. What company are you from? Who's your platoon commander? What's the matter with you?
Well, I'll take these. You take them, go on. Orderly. Yes, sir. Give me a hypodermic and an ampoule of luminal. Yes, sir. Of course, they're not always as bad as that. The simple anxiety state is the common one. But you may see one or two odd variations now and then. Hysterical conversions, for instance. What exactly is that, sir? Well, it's when a man develops an hysterical condition to blot out his anxiety. I don't mean that he does it deliberately, but the body takes charge and organises its own defence. Of course, the story behind it wouldn't be obvious here, but it would become obvious farther down the line during treatment. You can get all kinds of symptoms of that sort. Blindness, deafness, stammering, almost any damn thing. You mean to say all these are symptoms of anxiety, sir? Not necessarily, but they may be. Sometimes you get what's called a dissociation. A chap may develop uh, amnesia or fugue. That's where the memory goes. And sometimes you get an extreme dissociation. The chap shuts himself off from his surroundings and gets stupor, just like a coma. There's so much anxiety in these cases that the mind can only deal with it by shutting out everything. You realise that when you see one of these chaps under treatment at a psychiatric hospital. Under narcosis, they get it all out, like pus from an abscess. Well, now tell me what happened when you were at Sejanain. They're trying to get me. They're trying to get me. There it is! Go! It was a near one. They're pacing this place. Bastards. Where the hell don't we get them? Bloody bastards. There it is! It's coming straight for me! Go to hell! They get me. They get me soon. I know they will. Bastards. In some of these cases, the result of treatment is pretty dramatic. But it does the blokes good to get it off their mind. Incidentally, that goes for everybody, including people that you wouldn't look upon as cases at all. How do you mean, sir? Well, there are lots of people that have got painful experiences that they'd like to get off their mind. And the earlier they do so, the better. So you must always be prepared to listen to a man who wants to talk to you about something that's worrying him. If more people realise this, we'd have far less men breaking down. You see, it's more or less true that it doesn't matter what a psychiatric casualty looks like, there's always anxiety there. And how are we supposed to deal with it, sir? I mean, they seem to turn up in so many different forms. Oh, yes, they do. But the first aid treatment is always the same. Hot sweet tea, or soup, or food, Then a sedative, luminal, three grains for a walking case. Or medinol, ten grains. That's two tablets for the mild or walking case, 15 or even 20 grains sometimes for the severer cases. These two are provided especially for psychiatric cases. But of course, any sedative will do. Morphia, a quarter of a grain. Bromide, 30 grains. Or a good strong tot of whiskey or brandy. And finally, unless the case is very mild indeed, we evacuated to the core exhaustion centre. In other words, we passed the buck to the psychiatrist. That's what they paid for. It looks like the ambulance coming. Yes, sir. Shall I get them ready for a move? Yes, please. In the meantime, I'll fill in rags 3118. Five you this time, two stretcher cases, this one here and one round the back, and three walking.
goes. Unless I miss my bet, he'll be back here in under a week. Well, what exactly will they do with him up there, sir? A core exhaustion centre. We have a pretty simple routine. It's simple but effective. They break the treatment up into three stages of 48 hours each. And in the first 48 hours, they treat the lads all more or less like babies. They get plenty of good hot food and sound sedated sleep. During the second two days, they're treated like kids. They relax, do bits of making and mending and play games and so on. And have plenty of time to get clean and get back their self-respect. During this stage, a psychiatrist interviews each of the fellows personally. Well, your sleep seems to have done you good. You look a different man. How do you feel? Mm. Not at all bad, thank you, sir. I, I suppose I... I suppose I just needed a bit of a rest, like. That you did. Your company had a pretty rough time, from all accounts. Do you remember what happened? Well, not very well, sir. I know I was out there. Six days it must have been, and, and then... Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember it now. What about the others, sir? Do you know what happened to the rest of B Company, sir? Withdrawn on the day after you left. Did very well indeed. Incidentally, we've got one of your sergeants back here. Sergeants? Well, I don't know. Well, this sort of thing even happens to generals, you know. Have you, um, have you ever had a general there, sir? No, but I'm still hoping. Oh, well, what exactly did you do with them all, sir? Exactly what I'm doing with you. Getting you cleaned and rested and sending you back. When, sir? In a day or so. We've got to get you right back on form first. In the next few days, my lad, you're going to be reminded that you're a soldier. I see you've got your buttons sewn on. Yes, sir. Well, get your boots cleaned, too. Yes, sir. Got any cleaning materials? Yes, sir. The sergeant, see, this man has a loan of some cleaning gear. Don't forget you're a fusilier, Penton. Tomorrow morning I want to see you looking like one. Yes, sir. May I have your permission to dismiss the parade, sir, please? Turn your right and salute. Yes, miss! Sergeant? Yes? May I have permission to speak to the officer, Sergeant? What, no? Yes. Right, hang on here a minute. That's how it's done. Right! Sergeant? Well? Well, sir, I'm feeling pretty champion again now, sir. That's good. Well? Well, sir, I suppose we'll be going back again soon. Yes, you will. Perhaps tomorrow, if I can get transport. To our own mob, sir? Certainly, why not? Well, sir, you know how it is, sir. Sometimes when you've been sick for a while, they put you somewhere else. And, well, I'm going to get back to my own bunch again, sir. And that's what you're going to do. You're all going back to your own units and with a strong recommendation from me that you go back again immediately to the duties you were doing before you came here. In other words, you're perfectly fit and ready for anything. Does that satisfy you? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. He's a good lad. Ah, just what I wanted. Three volunteers for spud bashing. Come on.
learn to play in any key but C. Yes. Hey, Doc. Sandy, that fellow Rag of yours will be back in a day or two. Oh. He was a pretty good soldier, wasn't he, until he cracked up? Yes, until he cracked up. But when a good soldier goes to pieces like that, well, there must have been a yellow streak in him somewhere. Sandy, you're probably a very good soldier yourself, but uh, you're a bloody bad doctor. Under certain circumstances, any man will crack up. Particularly if he's got some... some private worry. Well, had he any private worry? Well, you should know. You're his platoon commander. Well, of course, he hadn't heard from his wife for some time. But surely a thing like that wouldn't turn a good soldier into a gibbering maniac. He wasn't a gibbering maniac. Look, he was worried about his wife. He probably had a dozen other things on his mind as well. And he had taken a hell of a pasting. And do you understand? Yes. Well, that's why I'd like to make sure that when he comes back, you and the rest of your platoon, don't make him feel an outsider. Don't make him feel that he's not wanted. Hmm, I see what you mean. Okay, Doc, I'll do that. And there's another thing. When he does come back, I'd like you to keep an eye on him yourself and let me know what you think about him. All right. Oh, and uh, while we're on the subject, that corporal of yours, um, what's his name? The fellow that's in charge of rag section. Corporal Main, do you mean? Yes, that's right. Well, he's tired too. I'd like you to let me have him down the R.A.P. for a couple of days. Main? Didn't know he was a scrim shanker. What's he say is wrong with him? He doesn't say anything's wrong with him. And he's not a scrim shanker, you should know that. But he'll wind up the same way as Rag if we don't get him in time. Nuts. Maine's as sound as any man in the company. Trouble with you, Doc, is you've got this psychiatry business on the brain. Psychiatry business? I'm no bloody psychiatrist, it's just common sense. If we get this fellow Maine in time, he won't need a psychiatrist. But what's wrong with him? He looks all right to me. Well, you saw him yourself last night in the corporal's mess. For a fellow that used him to drink, he's shifting a hell of a lot of beer. Well, you're shifting a hell of a lot of beer yourself if it comes to that. Well, who wouldn't after the time we've had? Well, it's good beer. Anyway, that's not Maine's only symptom. I had a talk to him this morning. He doesn't seem to be sleeping well. Nightmares. He's pretty depressed. I took the liberty of having a chat with the opportune sergeant. He says that Maine's very quiet lately. You know how that chap used to chatter. So if I can have him now for a couple of days in the R.A.P., he'll probably save a week at the core exhaustion center later on. That'd be a waste. Do I get him? Okay, Doc. You're probably right. Captain Booth? Yes? Colonel's compliments, sir. And he'd like to see you in his office if it's convenient. All right, thank you. See you later, Sandy. Okay, Doc. You sent for me, sir? Hello, Doc. Yes, um, have a chair. Cigarette? Thank you. Just wanted to congratulate you. Well, thank you very much, sir. What am I supposed to have done? I'm not quite sure, but whatever it was, it seems to have been remarkably effective. But there are very few psychiatric cases. Psychiatric, sir. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Psychiatric uh, cases in this uh, last show. Something like a third of the number we had in the party before, when Copeland was M.O. And this show is just as bad as that one. So I can only imagine that all this unasked for advice of yours has, has proved pretty sound. Well, I'm very glad you think so, sir, because I'd rather like to suggest... Yes, yes, you've certainly done a good job of work, Doc. Fixing up showers, stirring them up in the cookhouse, seeing the chaps get a good night's rest and all that sort of thing. You're more like a nurse than a doctor. Well, the point is, sir, that prevention is better than cure, and that's why I'd like to suggest... That yes, yes, that's what they say in the pamphlet, more or less. The pamphlet, sir? Yes, this thing. Just been reading it. Damned interesting. That's where it got to. I've been expecting that for some time. Well, you better hang on to it. Yes, I must say, I find it very interesting, all these symptoms. Very interesting indeed. This right, Doc. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Right, thank you. Sir. Oh, Doc. Yes. That practically confirms it. Startle reactions, nervous chatter, excessive smoking. 
And isn't there something about erratic eating and drinking, too? Well, yes, there are symptoms, but you can't diagnose... Uh... Have any lunch today? No, sir. Pretty busy. I wasn't hungry. Right, sir. Sleeping well? Damn it, sir. With all due respect, Here I don't think... Irritability. That caps it. Captain Booth, this is an order. You'll take things quietly for the next few days. Leave an orderly in charge for a night and give yourself a nice sedative. Medinal. Full dose. Fifteen grains. Medinal. Thank you.